Welcome to this short tutorial on Fluidit Heat. Fluidit Heat is a district energy system simulation software which allows you to simulate district heating and district cooling systems. In this demo we will create a small demo network with one heat source and few consumers. Let's start adding a heat source. On the top level menu you find add main plant. Main plant is the heat source that main plant is the heat source that main plant is the heat source that upkeeps the pressure and the desired temperature in the network. Let's add a little bit of pipeline. On the top menu you will find add pipes. I will start adding pipe from the main plant and if I press left button the software will create a vertex in that location. If I press down control button it will create a junction in that location and continue drawing the pipeline from that location onwards. Let's add few pipelines there. And when you're ready, you can press S key. The program will cancel the drawing and you can continue drawing some from some other location. I will press down control and start drawing here to add few pipelines. like this. I will put off the background map so I can see my pipelines better. You could also add a color layer between the background map and your network. Okay, now I will add a digital elevation model. Since I'm working in Finland, I can use the ready-made digital elevation models, but you could use your own ones as well. And these will be covered in the later, later demos. Now I will fetch the elevation to all my junctions from the digital elevation model. So I will select everything in my network and from tools I will use update point elevations. And I, are you sure you want to update 11? Yes. Now if I look at the junctions in my model I can see that they have a value here. So that's the ground level that I received from the digital elevation model. I will put a little bit higher ground level to those few nodes so we can see a little bit about how the pressure difference and the pressure lives in the network or changes. I put a little bit higher elevation to these few nodes so we can see how the pressure changes throughout the network. Now I would like to add some material to my pipelines. Since I didn't choose anything, they are with the template material. I will use the Finnish material pack that can be found from tools material packs. And then the materials can be found from model materials. These material libraries are model based and you can modify them any way you want to. But I will be using these in my demo model. I will select few pipelines here and select material to those. In our software, the default is that one pipeline includes the supply and the return pipes 
but you can modify this and say that a pipeline is only a supply or the pipeline is only a return line. I will add material to these few lines as well. Like that. Yes. Then we need some heat users. In fluid heat you can have open demands and closed demands. I will add some closed demands to my demo model. There. These are these purple dots and these dots represent a consumer. So if we look at one consumer more in detail, the heat demand consists of base demand. So this can be the calculated value for the central heating system. Then it consists of domestic hot water demand. So how much hot water is used and the consumers can have different curves that multiply the need of heat according to for example outdoor temperature or wind or humidity then you can define the return temperature curve for each consumer by itself or having a template return curve for all of them I will import these attributes from my from my Excel sheet. So I have the base demand and the hot water demand in an Excel sheet and I will import it to these demands and update the attributes. So from file import components to model. I will select files of type Excel, then I will select power demands. This will open an import dialog and from this drop down menu I will select what type of data I am importing. I am importing closed demands. And since I have the demands in my model already, I just want to update the attributes in those. So I will select match type update by name. Then the first column is the name. I will select it here. Then the second column is daily demand and the third column is usage water demand. So I will import these. Okay now it says that 10 objects were imported. Now if I look at the demands here, I will have the attributes that I have selected. Now I still need to connect these demands to network. I can do it manually by selecting the demands I want to connect and say connect selected demands here or I can connect all of them at once from tools, demands, update demand junctions. Now the connections connected to the nearest junction. Now we still need to add few patterns here since the demand is always related to the outdoor temperature we will need to define how the demand changes between the function of temperature. So let's add few curves here. Down from the model you find curves. We will add demand curve. I have these values in Excel so I will copy this. and paste this here. 
So we get this type of curve that from minus 30 degrees, the demand is one. So the users take the full demand and then there's a slope here. And eventually after 17 plus 17 degrees, the demand is small. And then let's take this as a as temperature curve. Then we will need supply curve that is used in our heat source since it's also dependent on the outdoor temperature. Set supply temperature. Then I will copy paste this. So when it's the coldest, we will be pushing 115 plus Celsius water to the network. And when it's warmest, the water is 75 plus degrees. Okay, then we will define a cooling curve for our power users. So we will define what temperature water they will be returning to the network. Return tem temperature, Let's paste it here. Okay, then we need to add these curves to our components. So for the demands, we will add the temperature curve. demand temperature curve and then return temperature curve like that and then for the heat supply we will be adding supply temperature curve like this Then, as we know, the water usage varies throughout the day. We will need to have a pattern to simulate the behavior of people. So I will put I will put hot water fluctuation as a pattern in my model. So this will simulate the behavior throughout the day. I have it here in Excel as well so I will copy paste this. It has 24 data points to represent every hour of the day and the behavior looks like this. So you will have the highest multiplier somewhere in the evening and in the morning. This of course depends on the area. Let's add this to my demands as well. So it's the domestic hot water demand pattern called pattern here. There. Now we should be quite close to be able to simulate our model. You should always save your model before simulation. Then run the simulation. Okay, it has warnings. Uh, this recommends to have pressure difference control on the main plant. We could add it by selecting the main plant, then saying that pressure difference should be 
30 meters so it's three pass then adding a control node let's say it's this is the control node here this that I selected to be a little bit higher so we want to have at least three bars of pressure difference in that node so I will select it let's see what was the name of the node so junction 6 let's say that this is the control node that we want to have the desired pressure difference you could have more control nodes as well let's simulate now it's done then let's start looking at the results I have here result windows that show the results in a time series format if you don't see these result windows you can find them from window results you can open as many as you want of these result windows and you can drag and drop them anywhere in your UI or in a different screen if you like then how these windows work is that you select a component and these update automatically unless you say lock then it doesn't change the selection let's see okay supply flow in this selection you can see that there's a lot of different results for for supply and return and then more on a general level for example power here we can see the total power demand of our system and how it changed throughout the day okay this was the basic of fluidity heat I hope you got some ideas on how to simulate your first model and what type of components you should add and what type of time series you should add on the later tutorials you will get a lot more information on how to actually simulate a real network.